Hey y'all, Kenny here. Thanks for joining me. I have a scope that's a good candidate for a do-it-yourself repair. I bought the scope new, mounted on a rifle, and after only 25 rounds or so, this scope will no longer hold zero. The scope is under warranty. Problem is, this company no longer manufactures scopes. I did send it in. They checked it out and replied back that the scope is beyond economic repair. Since they didn't have anything to replace it with, they offered me a voucher that I could use toward the purchase of some of their other products. Since I didn't need any of those things, I declined the voucher and asked if they could return my scope, which they did. Now, if you have a scope that's under warranty, obviously you shouldn't tear it down. Uh, if you do decide to do your own repair, just keep in mind that you can damage your scope in such a way that it can't be fixed and be willing to accept that as an outcome. This video is in three parts. Hopefully it'll give you some insight into how scopes put together. Let's get started. I'll begin by removing a turret as you can do this uh, with the scope still mounted the rifle if you choose. Now these turrets as well as the internal parts of the scope are assembled using a thread locking compound. So in order to remove these parts without damaging them I recommend you use some heat. Uh, the uh, maximum working temperature of the thread locking compound is 300 degrees Fahrenheit so you're going to need some heavy gloves uh, to protect your hands. For a heat source I use the electric heat gun. Uh, you can use an open flame like a propane torch. The key is don't try to bring the temperature up suddenly. Uh, gradually heat it up and don't stay in one spot uh, with your heat. I've already removed this turret. To break it loose I used a pair of pliers and a uh, piece of rubber to kind of protect it. I did mar it a little. It's just threaded into the scope tube. It's a pretty simple mechanism. You have a little detent pin in this one with a spring. Keeps it in position. It's just a threaded post. Now if you need to disassemble this, if you have a broken detent spring or something of that nature, uh, you can do that by removing this sir clip. You see me moving, pop that off, then this will thread out of the turret itself. Be careful, these parts are small, you have the spring and the pin. That's why I have this towel on the table uh, to protect uh, against these parts bouncing when they come out. Now you may have an exposed style turret and uh, your knob will have a screw of some sort that holds it on. Once you remove that screw you can remove the knob and then you can actually remove this turret uh, if you have a problem. When you reassemble use some thread locking compound. You can pick this up at the auto parts store. This is the blue which is uh, medium strength. I use the red which is uh, extra strength but just put a drop on there and uh, screw the turret back in and uh, snug it down. Next I'll remove the objective lens. This scope just has a cover. I've already removed this as well. You may be able to break that cover loose uh, with your hands. I have used a strap wrench before. You may also have to apply some heat. I did on this one. Uh, this does not have thread locker on it but the heat expands these threads makes it much easier to break it loose. Now before you re remove the uh, lens, I suggest that you measure how far this is threaded into the scope tube. That will save you time when you reassemble and uh, start to make your parallax adjustment. Next, just screw the lens out of the scope. Now the lens has an O-ring that seals the scope. Now I've only disassembled one scope that had an adjustable objective lens on it. There was a ring uh, on the scope that had the uh, markings for the yardage and the parallax adjustment. That ring uh, was mounted to the scope using what appeared to be hot melt glue. I just heated it up and I popped the ring back. When I did it exposed a screw uh, in the scope tube 
there was a tang on the lens assembly uh, and that screw was a stop to keep you from uh, removing the lens. I just removed the screw and then screwed the objective lens uh, off the scope tube. Next I'll remove the ocular lens. I applied some heat to this part. It does not have thread locker but the heat again just expands the threads. This one has a rubber protector so obviously you don't want to put your heat directly on the rubber, heat back on the tube. And there's the ocular lens. There's an O-ring on it as well to seal the scope. Next you break this lock nut loose. This is where you adjust your focus on your reticle. And then screw the ocular bail off. It'll come to a point uh, where it stops. That's because there's a nut internally uh, that prevents you from removing it. This is one of those parts that does have a lo uh, thread locker on it. Uh, so you're going to need to heat this up. I made a tool from an old lumber strap. You can find any kind of thin metal. Uh, we'll do the job. Just make it fit. Uh, well in the nut. Uh, heat your ocular bell up and just try to remove this nut. If it feels like you're going to strip the nut or bend your tool and you don't have it hot enough just keep heating until you can break this loose. There's the nut. The two slots that my tool fits in. I can't emphasize enough that you need plenty of heat there. Don't damage the, the uh, slots in the nut so that you can't remove it or you won't be able to disassemble the scope. Once you get that nut out, just screw this uh, bell off the rear of the scope tube and then remove your lock nut. Now I'll remove the erector. In order to do that I have to remove the magnification ring. This one's held on by a screw. The ring just pushes off to the rear. There are two O-rings that act as seals for the scope tube. Remove those. This scope has a screw in the side that positions the uh, erector in the scope tube. I've disassembled one scope that had a system of three screws that actually mounted uh, the erector uh, in the tube and I'll show you when I get the uh, erector out what I did to improve uh, on that system. This erector is held in by a nut inside the scope tube. Notice there is no reticle in this scope. Those two screw holes are where the reticle was mounted. This I believe was the problem with this scope. The reticle was mounted with two slotted holes and the screws weren't very tight. And I believe the rifle recoil was causing the reticle to shift uh, on the erector. The reticle is very fragile, so be careful. Most of the scopes I've disassembled had a threaded reticle holder. It was just screwed into the uh, erector. I recommend you remove it before uh, you disassemble the scope. On this particular scope, I couldn't access the nut without doing that. Uh, so, I just if you leave it in, uh, be very careful in uh, pushing the erector out of the scope tube uh, so that you don't damage it. Now, I made a tool uh, to remove the erector. Uh, this is out of an old cabinet hinge. Uh, the uh, metal lumber brackets 
would uh, work just fine. Uh, I just happen to have this piece already made and it fit this nut. Again, this is where you'll need heat. This nut is pretty fragile. Make sure your tool fits the nut well. And when you start applying heat, if you're uh, bending your tool or uh, you feel like you're going to strip this nut, keep applying heat until uh, you're able to break it loose. If you damage this nut, uh, you will not be able to uh, disassemble your scope if you strip those two little tangs out. And it's easy to do. So just go slow uh, with your heat and uh, make sure that you have it hot enough. Uh, when you get it hot enough, this will break loose uh, pretty easily. You can see that white residue. That's the thread locker uh, that's on that nut. Next, I'll push the uh, erector out of the scope tube. I use a wooden dowel to do that. You could use a screwdriver. Just be careful that you don't slip and uh, hit your lens. That's the reason I use this wooden dowel. I'll just go in and uh, uh, seat your... Uh, tool your uh, wooden dowel on the end of the erector and uh, push it out of the scope tube. There's a spring. If I can get it to fall free, this is the uh, erector spring. Every scope that I disassemble and repair, I add uh, springs. Uh, when I reassemble, and I'll show you in the second part of this uh, video uh, how I make these springs. Uh, it greatly improves uh, the shock and recoil resistance of a scope. Let's take a look at the erector. If you have the threaded reticle, you can remove it with a pair of pliers. Uh, it is installed with some thread locker, but I don't recommend uh, heat because you will damage your reticle. If you do by chance damage your reticle in the second part of this video I'll show you how to repair that. Now I mentioned the three screw uh, mounting system that I found in one scope. The accuracy of that scope was terrible. Uh, I found an o-ring that fit the erector tube and was slightly larger than the inside diameter of the scope tube so that this thing popped in the uh, tube snug uh, then the three screws uh, held it in place, and that solved uh, the accuracy problems of that scope. Now your director is basically a tube inside a tube. There are two lenses. When you rotate your magnification ring, your lenses move inside this tube, and the distance between the two changes and uh, that's how the magnification changes. This is a 3 by 9 magnification scope. Obviously these bushings need to be tight uh, in these slots if they're not and I did find that problem on one scope. I found a piece of tubing inside an ink pen uh, that would fit the slot. Uh, that's too small for this scope, but I have a piece of tubing uh, that does fit without movement. So you'll just have to go on a search if you have that problem. Now on the front of the erector is the part that your turrets rest against and your erector spring uh, holds uh, this tight against the uh, two turret screws. If you see the little copper part there, that's a wave washer that acts as a spring to hold this uh, tube tight against the rear of the erector. Now, I had to heat this to, to break it loose, but I wanted you to see the spring. You see the gap begin to open up. There's that little wave washer. So uh, you don't want any movement in this tube. Uh, you, when you reassemble, you don't want to tighten this up so tight that your magnification ring is hard to turn. There will be a slight gap uh, between this spring and uh, this tube. I'll go ahead and take one of these little bushings out so you can see it. 
if you don't need to disassemble any of this, if there's not an obvious problem, then I wouldn't take it apart. And there's the screw in the bushing. Now, if for whatever reason you need to take these lenses out, I suggest you either draw yourself a diagram or take a picture. And uh, then when you remove the front one, you need to mark it as the front because there are more combinations here than you can imagine if you get these things uh, mixed up. Now this scope has a ball and socket design, which is the best system to have. You can see there's a screw here uh, that this piece pivots on. Obviously that screw needs to be tight. There shouldn't be any back and forth movement in this ball and socket. Actually, you should be able to feel some drag there. If by chance this is loose, you'll have to make it a tool to access the nut that is inside. And again, it's the little two notch uh, nut. I made my tool out of an old utility knife blade. I put some tape on the sharp edge to protect my hands, but uh, it takes a pretty small piece of metal uh, to make this tool. I had to use a little cutoff tool. You can't use a hacksaw for this hard metal. Uh, but I made that tool. It fits in nicely. If I can see where I'm at. And uh, you can remove that. Now the tool's not very strong, so you're going to have to use a lot of heat uh, to get that nut uh, to break loose. Uh, so don't break your tool and don't damage the nut. Just keep heating. Uh, actually, it doesn't take much effort at all to break that nut loose uh, when you get enough heat on that. Again, if this is tight and it has drag, I don't see any reason to disassemble it. Uh, if these bushings are tight uh, in these slots, there's really no reason to take those off. Uh, if this front piece and the wave washer is collapsed so that this can't move. I don't see any reason that you should uh, disassemble that.